today he goes to the market and buys a wolf, um, a sheep, and a lettuce, right? And when he when he comes back home, he needs to cross the river, but he only has a small boat with enough space for himself and one of the things he bought, things animals, right? But the wolf and the sheep cannot be left together. <laughs> I mean alone, because the, the wolf is going to eat the sheep. Thank you so much. Is it Alvaro? Is that how I say your name? Alvaro, yeah. Alvaro. Thank you so much for joining me on the channel. And I wonder if you would like to introduce yourself. Sure. Well, first of all, it's a pleasure to be on, on your channel. And well, my, my name is Alvaro. Like I said, I'm, I'm from Spain, but I live in Poland. And I just love languages so much. You know, like teaching them, learning them, you know, everything related to language learning. I'm super passionate about it, like learning different languages and so on. And basically, I just, I guess, like pretty much anybody who had, a, you know, like an early experience with English or Spanish or other languages in school, high school and so on. I just couldn't speak the language, you know, when after 15 years of studying English, you know, in school, high school and so on, I could pass pretty much any grammar exam, but I just couldn't speak the language. So, you know, and it, sort of in the back of my mind, I, I always knew that I, I was interested in languages, right? But, you know, the frustration of not being able to actually communicate later I don't know, for whatever reason, I don't know if it's my passion for them or what it is, I just stuck with it, you know? <laughs> and I kept looking for different ways to learn languages. I, I read Stephen Krashen. I mean, I came across Stephen Krashen and comprehensive input theory and so on. And that was like the light bulb moment, right? That when I started to understand how the process actually works and so on. And since then, which was, almost like 2016 approximately you know i started my own project called natural languages in which my goal is to teach spanish mainly you know like directly but also to help people understand how the process actually works so you know they can later go on to learn languages on their own or or find the resources that are going to help them learn other languages so i directly teach spanish which is my native language but I also have, you know, a podcast with interviews with polyglots, teachers, and so on to help people understand how the process works so they can learn languages on their own or look for, or, or so they know what to look for in a teacher and things like that. Well, that was very interesting. And I think we, we spoke um, a month or two ago and had a whole conversation about comprehensive input, which I actually learned about the whole process from Pablo from Dreaming Spanish and started my own channel to try to teach people English by using those methods. Uh, I know I was exploring your your website and noticed that you have a whole section about like, are you a teacher? Would you like to learn this whole method that you have called mm -hmm. TPRS? And I wonder if you would like to talk a little bit about that. Sure, sure. So, I mean, the TPRS, which stands for Teaching Proficiency Through Reading and Storytelling. Um, I mean, I, I, I stuck with T, the TPRS thing because that's what it was called early on. But, you know, my goal is to use the comprehensible input principles to teach the language. I'll get into that in a moment. So the, the most important thing is to understand that we learn languages by listening and reading when we understand the message, right? And output will eventually show up as a consequence. So with that in mind, you know, all, quote unquote, all I need to focus on as a language teacher is to provide comprehensive input to my students, right? So the way I go about it, it's, you know, it's a slightly different if I'm, if I actually have students in a classroom environment, I mean, I, I do it online, but in, in a class, or if I'm creating videos for YouTube, because the difference is when I create a video for YouTube, I don't have the live feedback to sort of adjust the way I communicate so they understand what I'm talking about. Or, you know, or I mean, I I I have a 
pretty decent idea of where I where I need to use pictures and things like that because of my experiences with my real students, right? So I know if I use this particular word, I need to put up a picture because they're not going, you know, if it's for, for beginners, they're likely not going to understand. So things like that. But for the most part, it's all about finding a way to teach the language in a comprehensible way. But when I talk about teaching the language, I don't mean what we're used to doing, like teach the language, you know, form, uh, grammar, the language itself. No. My main goal and the thing I'm obsessed with is with coming up with ideas, you know, whether that's storytelling, whether that's games, and other ideas that I talked about in a moment, in which we're having fun, you know, like me and the students, if it's a class or I'm creating a video for YouTube, you know, in which I'm talking about something else. So the language is not the main focus. Let me explain. <laughs> the, the the most important thing or the main focus is message, is communication, the, the, the content, right? So we're creating a story that happens to be in Spanish. So they are learning the language as a sort of side effect, right? But I don't want them to pay attention to specific words, the language, et cetera. I want them to pay attention to meaning, right? And that's why I use storytelling a lot, right? So we create stories together because, and, and like bizarre stories with, you know, like science fiction, with aliens, with ridiculous things, because I've seen that the, the more bizarre the story, right? The more the students are going to sort of picture the the action in their head as opposed to paying attention to form right so you know if, if the main character is an elephant who can fly and flies to saturn i'm just uh, making that up on the fly uh, because he's got a friend who owns a hotel in in the rings in saturn for example you know it's just you're going to be focusing you're, you're going to be picturing the the actual elephant flying to saturn in your head so it's it's easier to take your attention off of form and focus on, on meaning, which is the most important thing. But ironically, that's actually what's helping you learn the language, right? So the idea is to have real life conversations, create stories, play board games, which is something I've been doing recently as well. In which, for example, with board games, I don't play board games like Scrabble, for example, because that, that's the first thing people think about when, when when they think about, oh, a board game to learn a language, so Scrabble. So there's words, you know, for, for those who don't know, you have to build words with specific letters and so on. That's focusing on, 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 on the language itself, and that's what I'm trying to avoid. Instead, I play regular board games in which the, you know, the most important thing is to understand the rules so you can win the game but it has nothing to do with the language. You know, I happen to explain the rules in Spanish and we play in Spanish because that's the language I want them to learn, right? But I explain the rules in Spanish and, and then I explain, so you have four different options. Do you want to take this one, this one or that one? So uh, now I'm going to roll the die or I'm going to move this piece around. You know, things like that. The, the good thing about board games is, first of all, they're fun, right? And they, they, they're focused on meaning because they want to understand the rules so they can win the game, right? <laughs> but also there's that physical component of it because, you know, you're moving pieces around. So it's easier to connect what you're talking about, your ideas with the act, with what's actually going on. Mm -hmm. So if I'm saying I'm going to roll the die and I actually roll die, even if you didn't know that word that you're going to, you're going to understand because of the action. the action and seeing the dice and all that. Right. So I tell you, you have four options. You can take this piece over here. You can move this meeple over there and they see the action at the same time. So that's another idea. So the, the, the reason why I came up with the training and I also thought about training, not just learning and um, teaching the language, but also teaching teachers how to teach, <laughs> that makes sense. It's because, you know, at the end of the day, if I if I teach 10 people how to teach, we're gonna impact way more students than if I do it myself, right? So it's it's basically that, like different ideas that I use in the classroom or, or even 
for for YouTube videos. You know, I also so storytelling is one of the main things that I do, whether that's for a YouTube video or in a classroom environment. But I I test different ideas within stories. For example, I, I test like I don't know mystery ideas. For example, I I I came across a board game. It was something related with Sherlock Holmes. That I think in the board game you had to, you know, just travel to different places in London asking people for you know details about the specific mystery, right? But instead of playing the game, I just thought so within the context of one of the stories that we're creating in class, you know, in, in, in the first time I did it, I had American students, right? So I'm trying to remember what it was, but so one of the characters in the story went to the United States and he or she had to solve a mystery in Philadelphia. I remember. Yeah, I remember that like the cost the constitution had, had been stolen. That was the mystery. Yeah. So then but we're creating the story on the fly, right? So but using the game idea. So it, it makes it more fun. And we, we started, you know, like there's one, you know, I don't know. There's one person in in a supermarket who has some information about the mystery because I don't know they were present in the crime scene. There's things like that, you know. So it's there's a lot of storytelling all the time, but you know, combining with different ideas or also within the con. I don't remember where I took this, this from, but um, also with within the context of a story. If we're talking about again an elephant, like I said, um, I, I'm going to ask the student. So the elephant has a dream, right? He wants he wants to achieve a goal or something. So instead of just coming up with one option with one answer and you know uh, keep building the story, we collectively come up with four different options and then we roll a die to decide which one we're going to change. Oh, that's so interesting. The, so the, the the story is going to be different depending on the outcome, right? And and that way you you also need to think about more ideas. You sort of develop your creativity as well. And I, I like it personally. It's a yeah. I think I took that idea from picture and adventure books. You know that those books, that sort of interactive books. That, oh right, right, right. Yeah, that you have different options, and depending on which one you choose the 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 outcome is different and you have to go to a different page so you know so in that example you know he's got the elephant's goal is to go to saturn to visit a friend that's one option the second option is he wants to be an nba professional basketball player for example you know like four different options so we roll the die so you know we're creating the story but it's always gonna you know it's, it's gonna take weird turns because of of the random random so you know like it's storytelling but i try to use different ideas to make it as interesting as possible while keeping it comprehensible because that's the most important thing but i find students really enjoy that because it's not the typical i mean like pure storytelling is great also as well you know but i like it when it's more you know, when 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 we include more things like like the ones I just talked about, sounds very interactive. Um, I think for myself, I've never really taught people in person. Uh, I've done a couple online things where we've done like English and Spanish, and I've tried to teach that way. But mostly, I'm just making the videos, which, like you said, it's hard to not have the feedback when I'm making the videos. Maybe I'm telling a story and I'm drawing pictures, but I'm not having the feedback of someone that's not understanding. When right. I go to edit it, then I'm thinking, oh, I wonder, I don't know if they understand that word. So then I'm adding a picture or something like that to kind of help them mm -hmm. understand what I'm talking about. So those particular videos take a real long time because first I planned out the story and I planned out the pictures I was going to draw and maybe the mm -hmm. different motions. Like I, um, I saw the boy or he was running and try to do mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And then after editing, I'm like, oh, I'm not sure that they understand this. So then I have to like spend more time editing that out. Right. So it takes a real long time. I have not had a chance to teach people in person or online like that. But I'm interested in this whole idea because I'm my only qualification to teach English is that I'm a native English speaker. I have no 
um, teaching certification whatsoever for ESL or TOEFL or any of those mm -hmm. things. I, like yourself, tried to learn Spanish through high school and college, and it was very much just grammar, take the test and, mm -hmm. and learn the grammar, but I didn't learn how to speak and mm -hmm. discovered this whole method of in, um, comprehensible input method probably a similar time as you did. I think I discovered it in 2017 ish, 2018 and started to learn that way. And then it was my daughter who had an idea to do a YouTube channel and she was really good at drawing. So that's where we kind of came up with that idea. Not anything I was planning to do, but I really have enjoyed doing it since then and trying to find different ways like YouTube rolled out the whole thing about doing YouTube shorts. And I thought, well, how can I teach English in just a minute? And so I started doing tongue twisters, but there's only so many tongue twisters that you can do. So I've now decided to do this little, um, it's kind of like a game. There's a game mm -hmm. called Trivia for Your Eyes. So this particular one is a Ferris wheel. And so mm -hmm. basically I'll do, this is actually the London Eye apparently. And so I'll right. do um, three different trivia questions and then I'll point to different things and I'll put them in post editing to kind of show the person what I'm talking about. So that's where I got the idea of doing these little, like, how can I teach some English in less than a minute? So it's kind of mm -hmm. comprehensible input because I'm using my hands, I'm pointing to some pictures. And yeah. I, I think it's almost like telling not a story, but like teaching like three facts about something interesting, right? So I started mm -hmm. doing that way to like to put some short videos, some longer conversations that are more intermediate and advanced movie reviews um i like to do because i like watching movies and then mm -hmm. like i said the the beginner or super beginner is those ones that are taking me a real long time to edit well i have to say that the movie reviews take a long time to edit too yeah uh, no i, I just I, like i'd like to know more about like so have you been teaching some people how like teaching fellow teachers how to um teach languages so uh, mostly i've done it for people who want to teach students right not not for people who want to create videos but that's that's a good idea actually <laughs> anyway uh because yeah there's a slight difference it's like we talked about the fact that you don't have the live feedback but yeah i have several ideas that i want to touch on because i've i've also been experimenting with shorts and other ideas and yeah, you were talking about videos for beginners, super beginners, obviously, because you don't have the live feedback and people are, you know, even beginners, there are different types of beginners, right? So one video, some people might understand and others don't, right? I mean, my experience with live students, although it's online, <laughs> helps me when it comes to, you know, I know this specific word took them a couple of times to understand it, so I'm going to use a picture. So I go a little bit quicker because of that, right? But, you know, in the end, the one thing with English is most people know a little bit, right? So you probably can get away with a lot more things because of that. But, but yeah, I guess it's important to find the balance between, you know, creating a lot of content videos, but being able to do it as quickly as possible so you don't have to take forever to, to edit one video, right? So in that sense, one, one thing that I did as well that I haven't done recently, but is I started creating a story as well. But at the end, of, it was like a 10, 11 minute video, things like that, but similar to the ones I'm creating in my class. And at the end of the, at the, end of the video, you know, the, the, the main character, whoever that was, got to, new, got to a new city and he had a problem, right? So, the, and and that that's the end of the story. And I want people in the comments to suggest ideas to continue the story for the next episode. Oh, that's a good idea. Right? So instead of giving them what actually happens, you know, around the, like 10, 15 minutes, but... Like at the end, of, at the end of the video, this the, the elephant, for example, in the in the same example. So he he goes to Sutton in a rocket, but he's got a problem. And what's the problem? And then people, you know, um, give me suggestions in the chat. So you know, he he encounters a dragon, whatever it is. You know? <laughs> and and people seem to to like that. And then when it comes to shorts, 
what I've been doing is something similar to what you're doing, like sort of trivia questions. But so for what I've been doing is one option is I've taken like famous people, look up, you know, like facts about them or curious things and things like that. So for example, three facts about what was the last one I did? Genghis Khan, for example. Two of, two of them are true and one is false. And then they have to say which one is Can false. Which one it is, right. Or another one that I've been doing is I've, I've looked for three facts about a war city. You know, like this city is the biggest in its country. It was, you know, uh, its name means whatever. So three facts about the city. And from those facts, they need to guess what city it is. Oh, that's cool. Right. And you can do that with cities, with celebrities. Yeah, with that's a, the cool thing about these cards is they are everything. They are animals, places, like this one is um, the Coliseum. Coliseum. I have people on here, like even the game Scrabble that we talked about earlier. So there's all right, kinds right. of different ones. And I figure I have 400 of these, so that'll keep me busy for a while. Nice. But I like that idea right. of which one's which one is true out of the three facts. Right. That's a good idea. Yeah, it's like again, the, the idea is to. I, I'm always obsessed with the idea of how to focus the conscious mind into the. I mean, how to put it into words. How to make them focus on on meaning, right? And forget about the specific words I'm using. Because if you understand the message, you're acquiring the language even right. if you're not consciously aware of it that that's my the main point so by doing that they're thinking you know they're trying to solve something or they're trying to, back to the board game thing they're trying to understand the rules in order to win the game right it's engaging them right so more was thinking about ideas that makes them engage with the content that makes them guess about you know for i've, I've also used what's what's the word riddles but riddles not language related riddles because there's some like that like those but like riddles in which you intellectually need to solve something uh, regardless of the language i happen to use spanish because that's the language they want to learn right but so for example there was one about i think it was a merchant in india who goes to the market every day and he needs to cross a river, right? And today he goes to the market and buys a wolf, um, a sheep, and a lettuce, right? And when he when he comes back home, he needs to cross the river, but he only has a small boat with enough space for himself and one of the things he bought, things, animals, right? But the wolf and the sheep cannot be left together, <laughs> I mean alone, because the, the wolf is going to eat the sheep. And same with the sheep and the lettuce, right? So how many trips does he need to make in order to pass all of them across the river? So, you know, it's a riddle that they need to solve, but it's they need to solve it intellectually, if that makes sense. It, it has right. nothing to do with language. Yeah, nothing to do with language. I like that. I, I, can, I can talk about a riddle, like language-related one, but that's not going to help them because it's going to make them focus on the language itself. Mm -hmm. yeah. I also like well, the idea of, and I, I don't know if you do this at all, but using things that people know, like the story of Little Red Riding Hood or Aesop Fables mm -hmm. or things like that, because probably people all over the world are familiar with, well, most people might be familiar with the fairy tales, but the fables and stuff like that, kind of doing stories like that, because people will understand them. Like for instance, like I, mm -hmm. I watched Pablo do Little Red Riding Hood and things that happen in the news, because if you are hearing about the news and then you are telling a little story about that news thing, then people that have paid attention to the news in their own language might be able to understand that as well. Right. Yeah, you, you, you have some previous context about the topic. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's so many different things that you can think of. I, I try to think of things that I enjoy doing or watching and you know think different ideas related to that another one that i did is again i take this from games as well but there's i think it's a game but there's a game with nine dice 
with different objects on them. So you roll them and you need to create a story with, with those nine objects, people, whatever it is. Things like that, you know, because and, and you have the visual help from, from the dice. So you have, I don't know, like a, a person lifting weight. That's one of the objects. Another one, it's a, a compass. Another one, it's a rocket. So you need to create a story with those details, with those objects, people, etc. I, I like that storytelling part, that creating new stories. I like it. But taking stories, like famous stories, like the, the one you just mentioned, or Pinocchio or Peter Pan or whatever they are, and explain them, explaining them in a way that is more comprehensible with drawings and so on. Yeah, that's also a good idea. Yeah. I do like the idea of the games because that's the whole thing that people really love the games. And I trying to think of how other ways that I can incorporate that in a video because I'm, I mean, I may eventually do some one-on-one -on -one lessons, but right now I'm mostly making the video. So it's like, how can I take, and I've got a lot of games on the shelf. Like how can I take games and kind of incorporate that or online games? Like there's different online games. Like I play this, like with my daughter, I play this geo geo finder, I think where you kind of like are, put yes, in a sir. famous place yeah. and you have to like look at clues and figure out where you're at. So mm -hmm. I, I think that, and I've seen actually Pablo do that as well, but things that you can do. And I've done things with Google home where you play a game, like Google home has like almost a mad libs. So you are kind of doing a little grammar, but you could be like, okay, what's a verb and so on. And then you end up having this funny story because use these funny mm -hmm. verbs or nouns and so on, or 20 questions that you can play with Google Home, things like that. I've done things where I just ask I, all these funny things, like what kind of funny things can you ask Google Home or Alexa? And then mm -hmm. I draw pictures or, or put that in after post edits to kind of like teach people English, but kind of do it in a fun way. Yeah, and then, yeah, that's, those are awesome ideas. Yeah, I was, I, 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 the one you mentioned was GeoGuessr, I think yes. it's called. Because I've 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 done a couple of videos like that. Like I, I I'm playing GeoGuessr, but I'm explaining the rules. So you know, I'm I'm sort of explaining my my thinking. So okay, so looking at the, you know, looking at the trees, it, it looks like a tropical place, right? So I would right. Think, and you're I'm you're sort of, explaining. You're really like explaining everything you're seeing. In, and I'm you sorry. can you, you use your mouse to kind of point to what you're you're seeing because you're recording the screen. So you can kind of say, oh, these trees over here, they're the kind of trees that grow in a tropical place. Hey, okay, we're looking at these signs. Oh, these look like European cars. Look at the license mm. plates, kind of clues that you would look for and kind of point Excellent. to them and explain and really kind of actually have a friend that is completely blind. And I think I've become better at teaching English because when I go out with her, I'm explaining and, and everything that she can't see. So mm. by doing that, I think I've gotten better at explaining to people that are learning English because I'm going to go into more detail than mm. I would otherwise. Absolutely. I, I think that's been a very helpful experience and not something that was something new to me in the last five some so years. I think I've met this friend and I think that that's become very helpful for me to learn how to teach people English as well. Right, right. Yeah, and the, the, the good thing about the GeoGuessr one is also it doesn't take a lot of time to and a lot of editing things because, yeah, you, you talk about, I remember, so, you know, looking at, at, the, at the road, the cars drive on the right here, right? So it's not Australia or Japan or India where they, they drive on the left or the UK. And so you, you explain your, your thinking process as you're playing the game, you explain it, right? And... I'm thinking about all the things that I've done. I've done some cultural videos. So in your case, you could, you know, just do like a 10, 15 minute video talking about a uh, state. So one video for New York, another video for Washington, another one for California. And, you know, you, you don't need to go into details. You talk about, you know, the most interesting things about the, the state. Ten interesting and, things to see in Massachusetts or you know, 10 fun yeah. facts. I've done things like that, like 10 fun facts about this. I haven't done any states, but 10 fun yeah. facts about whatever holiday, or I've done mm -hmm. one recently that was 10 fun facts about Black Friday. And I actually mm. used Zoom because what I could do with Zoom is I could change the background behind me. So for each fact I was talking about, 
then I would click. I had the whole virtual background and change the background to what I was talking about, whether it was the Macy's Day Parade. And I would just like yeah. point and I could see that was one helpful thing because when I'm videoing with my green screen, I'm not mm. exactly sure where I'm going to put things. But when I when I could see, oh, OK, I'm pointing towards the Santa Claus and the Macy's Day Parade because it was behind me. Right. Yeah, that's good. That's good. And yeah. And there's another one that I've been I've been looking into it, but I'm afraid it takes more time <laughs> than, I, than I'd like to is some sort of animation, like animated videos. That would take a long time. I mean, I, I, I didn't get to get to us. I mean, because I, I don't have the skills to do it, <laughs> but I guess, you know, you, you can learn them, of course. But I'm thinking about ideas on how to create animated videos, but in a sort of simple and quick way. Yeah. There's and some one software thing that, that I, like Toonalys or something like that. Yeah, there is, but it, it probably takes longer. But it uh, takes longer, one yeah. thing that that I thought could be interesting is I, I haven't done it yet, but I thought about it on on Canva. You can also create videos, but one of the things I thought about was, you know, you, you create the first um, image. Right, this uh, landscape or a city, or you know the characters, the most important details, and then you can duplicate those within Canva, right? So you duplicate it, but you change something. So I was to give you an example. I was thinking about you know the main character being an orange, <laughs> an orange, right? So there's an orange who lives in New York City, for example. So you have the background of New York City and the orange, and then I'm. When you create it, you just duplicate that, but you add eyes and, and nose and 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 uh, mouth and different things to, to the orange, right? So then you explain that. The next one, you know, the, 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 the orange is a famous architect. So so you you know you 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 duplicate the, the, the second image or the second video. And you add new details, things like that. So it's, it doesn't take as long because you you only need to like duplicate all the time and change right. a couple That's of things idea. and sort of do a voiceover. Yeah, <laughs> you know. So because yeah, I'm, I'm always obsessed with ideas that that allow me to create a lot of content without having to spend a lot of time on editing and right. Like that. That's the thing that I found, like the idea of doing this like multi-camera thing that Pablo has done for a really long time, that takes a long time to do. And it's it's not as easy. So what I'm doing right now more of is more of the movie reviews because one, I like it. It's kind of like a little movie mm -hmm. club with Ken and I or Lorel and I. And then we watch the movie, we do the recording and I edit it. It does take me a while, but or these type of conversations where it's not going to take very long to do the editing. I'm doing more of that mm -hmm. because that's sustainable actually. For my daytime job, I got to actually teach YouTube. And one of the things that they talk about for YouTube is things that are sustainable. So if you're making videos that are taking you huge amount of hours to do, you're not going to make as many of them and you're going to burn out. So trying to find things that are more sustainable, the little YouTube mm -hmm. shorts are sustainable. They they take me, you know, they take way less time to make as well as the yeah. conversation videos. So I'm making those beginner level videos, but not as many because they're not they're not quick. And I, I like the idea of doing things that are going to be easier, like that idea of Canva or something. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, the, for me, the stories, it take me, yeah, it, they, they take me relatively short time because I don't know if I'm, I, I love the, I love that story creation thing in, in general, but also how to bring it to work. Like my creativity is, has improved from my classes because I, I, I'm more used to improvising and so on so it's not something that it really takes a long time and and you don't really need to get that crazy a another series that I started on my channel was so I used the the four options idea so I, I rolled the die <laughs> um, within the video as well but I just talked about a story of a woman who lives in New York City right so then and then you can get into as, as many details as you want to so this story, the woman lives in New York City, right? And he wakes up every morning at 8 a.m. and drinks coffee in her favorite um, Yankees cup, <laughs> uh, things like that. She she actually is an FBI agent, right? Because there, there's a mafia in the building, things like that. 
but then you know she she has a meeting in a cafe nearby at 10 a.m right she, she's gonna meet a famous person and it, and that, at that moment four options she's gonna meet the mayor of new york she's gonna meet a famous professional football player whatever and so i roll the die and depending on the option I, I I I go on in the next episode, right? So I do that at the end of the episode. And creating a story doesn't take me that long, actually. And I just need to, you know, when when editing the videos, I just add a few pictures here and there where I think they're not going to understand. So you've been doing, have you started the YouTube channel after teaching online or like what, how did you get started teaching Spanish and languages? Yeah, so I, when I started with my project in late 2016 or so, because I, I found out about Comprehensible Input and Stephen Crush and so on early 2016. Then in July, I went to a TPRS conference, a workshop in France to sort of learn the technique and you know how to teach languages with this approach, with storytelling and so on. And uh, well, I went back in 2017 again but that, that first year was the one that really helped me sort of put all the pieces together, you know, understand why we're doing the things we're doing, uh, understanding that finding a way to make yourself understood is the most important thing, right? Whether that's gestures, pictures, real life context, and so on. So I started teaching late in 2016. Um but I, I didn't start creating videos. I mean, I created a couple here and there in, in in those years, but it wasn't until the pandemic, like March 2020, that I started creating videos for, for YouTube on, on a regular basis, let's say. And I had already been teaching for three years prior to that. So I had the experience of teaching live students, right? Again, online students, but in person, like live. <laughs> you know, that, that gave me the experience to start creating videos, to start creating stories for my YouTube channel, right? So I, I already, answering your questions, I already had experience with teaching before I started creating videos. But yeah, then I, I'm, I'm always thinking about different ideas or different ways to make comprehensible input content that it's as interesting as possible to to the person on the other side right That's and cool. taking into account that when you create when you create a youtube video you don't have the live feedback right so because with live students you can sometimes you can just test to see if they understand you know I mean, that, that sounds like, like a good idea and i i'm absolutely interested actually in this like the fact that you teach people how to do this because i think that would be helpful if I, if I kind of had some training myself, as opposed to just like learning from YouTube, which you can learn an awful lot from YouTube, but in addition, you know, being able to get some training, but also to test it out with people that I'm already kind of teaching. I have like a little group of mm -hmm. people that um, Ken and I help learning, help, help to learn English, help to teach English. I can't even speak English sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, but in any case, maybe test it out with some of them and say, hey, let's try this out and, and see you know, how right. it goes before I make a video, because maybe I'm making a video and not really understanding what people might not understand, because I'm just, you know, coming up with the content, you know, coming up with a storyline with a, a script, pictures I'm going to draw, but I'm not always thinking about, because I don't have that experience like you had already for like three plus years before you started mm -hmm. making the videos. It helps. Yeah. Yeah. So to give you a quick ex example with Spanish, for example, um, because of my classes, I know, I mean, uh, I know that if I use the word continuar, the verb continuar, that's pretty close to a continuum in, in English, right? So I know they're probably going to understand. But in, in a lot of situations in Spanish, we use the verb seguir. Which they're, they're, I mean, there's synonyms, all right? One or the other might sound a little bit more natural, depending on the circumstance, you know. But the thing is, I know if I use continuar, they're going to understand, as opposed to using seguir. Then, depending on the context, you might get away with it if you use the other one. But things like that, you really get to know when, when you're teaching students. Or, for example, a, a super simple word 
which is the word for idea, in, in Spanish is written exactly the same way, right? But the pronunciation is different. And I noticed at the beginning with my students, like my first classes, I noticed, I would say the word idea, uh, like tengo una idea, have an idea, right? And sometimes they, they wouldn't understand. And, and in my head, you know, they're written exactly the same way, like idea, idea, but you know, like I-D-E-A. But then I realized because of the pronunciation being different, they didn't understand it. But the moment I wrote it down, it, it was all clear, right? So things like that help you realize that, okay, this one they might not understand, so I'm just going to write it down. Or this one they're not going to understand, so I'm just going to put up a picture. It helps in that regard. Yeah. yeah, definitely. So if people are interested like in taking classes, you have a website? Mm -hmm. So yeah, they're interested in learning Spanish or, or learning how to teach the language. Like, like I said, when it comes to teaching the teachers, I've only done it with teachers who want to teach their students directly, right? But it's a good idea to sort of train other people to create comprehensible videos for YouTube as well, because the idea is the same, you know, to make it comprehensible. But like we've been talking about, it's a little bit different because you don't have the live feedback. So I might think about that in the future. But, you know, right now what I'm doing is teaching my native language Spanish and and teaching other teachers how, how to teach, right? So they can go to my website, like naturallanguages.com or send me an email at alvaro at naturallanguages.com or, you know, I'm everywhere on social media like YouTube, um, Instagram, TikTok, everywhere. <laughs> right, Facebook. and we'll have links to your website and YouTube below and your email mm -hmm. and all that for people to to connect with you. I Like I said, I'm super interested because I feel like I'm still learning. I've been doing this for three and a half years, but I still have a lot to learn um, mm -hmm. with teaching people English in this natural way, which I think is is the way to go. Like the learning grammar. I'm not going to say learning grammar is not important because if you're going to be taking tests that you need to take to like study in foreign countries, you're going to have to take a test that's going to have grammar on it. I know mm -hmm. for myself, we learned in English, like we had all these grammar tests and grammar like diagramming sentences in high school and I never used it the rest of my life but right. I had to learn in high school so it's, it's yeah, I'm not going to say it's not important it is important if you're taking those tests but if you want to learn language to communicate with people yeah. I think the comprehensible input method is the way to go exactly exactly yeah and uh, you know people that want to contact me if they're interested in, in class awesome of course but any question if they have just some minor question about language learning they can reach me out and any of the links that we'll will provide i'm more than happy to help with that and yeah well thank you so much and i i hope to have some more conversations both on your channel and mine in the future absolutely happy to do it <laughs> all right thank you